Lightning Rod at Dollywood is my favorite roller coaster. Between the relentless speed, the unique setting on the mountain, and the powerful airtime, Lightning Rod is perfection when it chooses to operate. While this coaster's ride experience is incredible, trying to get on this coaster can be a bit tricky. But no matter what it takes, Lightning Rod is worth it and I'll explain why in this review. Outlaw Run opened at Silver Dollar City in 2013 as Rocky Mountain Construction's first topper track wood coaster, and it was a resounding success. This coaster features steep drops, powerful ejector airtime, and a record-breaking three inversions. So when Hershend wanted to add a new coaster to Dollywood in 2016, they went back to RMC for yet another record-breaking wood coaster, and it would be none other than Lightning Rod. This attraction would become the world's first launch wooden roller coaster, and also the world's fastest wood coaster with a top speed of 73 miles per hour or 117 kilometers per hour. But as awesome as these records were, the ride's placement and layout were the real stars in my opinion. Lightning Rod would be built on a heavily wooded hillside, the 206 foot or 63 meter tall launch hill and the finale were highly visible from within the park. But the ride's entire first half was a mystery, it was hidden from view from park guests. This part of the ride would be nestled in a valley, and it's really only visible backstage or from some of the nearby cabins. Then the layout would feature a bevy of crazy elements. There would be wave turns, off-axis hills, and most importantly, the quadruple down. The quad down is Lightning Rod's signature element, and it's truly one of the best sequences on any roller coaster. This was one of the most anticipated roller coasters of all time. Too bad it was, and still is, a royal pain to ride. Lightning Rod's opening was delayed three months due to issues with the LSM launch system, which was supplied by a third party in Velocity Magnets. The ride officially opened in mid-June 2016, but the ride closed just days later due to a part recall. When the coaster reopened, it was placed in technical rehearsal for the entire summer season, closing for hours and days at a time. The ride was seemingly closed more than was actually open. But the issues only continued. In June of 2017, the ride's launch was modified, and the coaster has run slower ever since. Many stated the ride was trimmed, but that's incorrect. No brakes were added after the launch. The launch still accelerates you to the advertised 45 mile per hour or 72 kilometer speed, but it seems to cut off sooner, so you crest that first hill with even less speed than before. So why did Dollywood do this? The original thought was that it had something to do with the launch reliability, which was unique to this wood coaster. But I think it was due to structural issues. Over the next few years, Dollywood tried to reduce stress on the track. The trains originally had a fancy truck and lead car. The trunk was removed altogether, and the lead car was downsized. And at points, the ride even ran without a lead car. By slowing down the speed you crest that first hill, Lightning Rod would have less speed through the layout and subsequently less stress on the track. Dollywood often ran the coaster with one train to reduce the number of cycles and cumulative wear. The ride developed some potholes over time, including one at the base of the main drop, so it needs some track work over the years. RMC originally built Lightning Rod with their Topper Track technology, and Lightning Rod pushed the limits of it. Topper Track differed from traditional wood coasters because the top layers of laminated wood were replaced with steel. Most wood coasters have just a thin metal layer atop a stack of wood. But between the 2020 and 2021 seasons, 57% of the ride's topper track was replaced with the all-steel iBox track. So Lightning Rod became the first and only RMC to be RMC'd. The launch through the main drop and then the ride's entire second half received the iBox track. The wave turn, twists and shouts still have the old topper track. This makes Lightning Rod a true hybrid coaster but I now consider it more of a steel coaster because over half the layout has the iBox track. Lightning Rod still has its issues though. The ride is open more than it's closed, but I expect to see this ride have bouts of downtime throughout the day. The electromagnetic launch system can still overheat. The ride can also throw faults like the best of them. Then last year the two trains bumped. After a failed launch on a rainy day, Lightning Rod tried to reset itself by moving backwards but it went a little too far and it slid into the train in the station. One other thing to watch out for is snow. 
Lightning Rod can run in temperatures as low as 37 degrees, but it still has trouble with snow and ice. Because of Lightning Rod's location, it is very difficult to clear this ride's tracks after a snowstorm. The sun has a hard time hitting the backside of the coaster, and the terrain is a challenge to navigate for the employees. I have only visited Dollywood since Lightning Rod opened, and I have a 50% success rate getting on this ride. I've had better luck in my more recent visits ever since the ride was retracted. My fiancé has a 100% success rate, although that was almost thwarted this past weekend. After Pigeon Forge got 4 inches of snow on Saturday, Lightning Rod was understandably closed at the start of Sunday. The park worked their hardest and got the ride open for the final 8 minutes of the day. And once we saw that ride open, we hightailed it across the park to get on the last train of the day. Honestly, that's my mentality whenever I see this ride open, because I've been burned by this ride so many times. It was closed during my 2016 trip. Then when I returned for a week-long family vacation in June of 2017, I saw employees working on the launch, and I even saw the ride test, but it never opened to the public. I then returned in the summer when visiting a friend in Atlanta, and it decided to close for just that weekend. The first time I was able to ride Lightning Rod was in the winter of 2017, and it was a nail-biter leading up to the trip. Pigeon Forge was hit with a big snowstorm the week prior, and I also tore my ankle. While Lightning Rod reopened, I could barely walk, and Dollywood was out of wheelchairs for the weekend. But I was riding Lightning Rod no matter what. I took ibuprofen, bought a big ankle brace, bought an even bigger pair of sneakers to accommodate that brace, and I walked straight-legged up and down the stairs into the station. I was not being denied lightning rod. And if you're familiar with this queue line, you know it's a bit of a workout. So it's quite the trek on a bad ankle. The queue house has three levels. The station is on the top level, and there are switchbacks on the lower two levels. But Dollywood has seemed to tweak both the queue line and how they load lightning rod season to season. Originally, Time Saver and the standby queue line were routed directly into the station. Now there are three lines on the second level. The leftmost one is for standby, the right one is for the time saver skip the line pass, and the middle one is for the new single rider line. At the end of these lines is a grouper. They tend to let just one or two trains worth of people in the station at once. If you're in the standby or time saver line, they'll usually take seating requests. There isn't a bad seat in this ride, but my favorite seat is the front by a slim margin for the added sense of speed. The back is pretty good too because you have that extra pull on the drop. Lightning Rod routinely has the longest line at Dollywood. This is for a few reasons. One, it's an epic ride. People want to ride it. Two, it doesn't have the best capacity. I still often see the ride running just one train, and each train holds up to 24 riders, and it also isn't the fastest at loading. Three, it is still prone to breakdowns, so when people see this ride open, they flock over there. The standby wait can easily be 1-2 to two hours on busy days. Typically, I buy a time saver to maximize my rides on Lightning Rod. This usually gets you on 10-15 to 15 minutes tops. The single rider line is usually as fast as time saver as well if you aren't picky where you're sitting and you're willing to split up with your group. Lightning Rod is a 50's hot rod theme. The ride's queue line and station is themed to look like an auto shop. There are some details on the walls to look at, but not too much. Then the trains resemble red hot rods with flame decals. I really like how they look. The ride itself has no theming along the course, which is fine. The layout and setting are strong enough to compensate. Although the visuals have changed over the past two years. In its early years, many trees hugged Lightning Rod's layout. For safety purposes, the trees adjacent to Lightning Rod and many of Dollywood's other coasters were chopped down before the 2021 season. However, this has had a minimal impact on the ride experience for me. That setting is still so unique and isolated that Lightning Rod feels just as special. That's especially true at night. Lightning Rod is the world's best night ride. There is zero light once you clear the mountain, which makes the sideways airtime even more disorienting. Then when you crest the top of the quad down, you see the beautiful lights of Dollywood down below as you careen down one of the best airtime sequences out there. The restraints are a little different than other RMCs. You have the familiar seatbelt, and you also have the familiar contouring of the lap bar plus shin guards. I don't mind these restraints at all. 
they allow for airtime, and I don't find them uncomfortable. But I know those shin guards can be a problem for taller guests from a comfort perspective. The unique thing with lightning rods restraints is that you lower your own. On most RMCs, you are chided by the ride ops if you even lower your restraint an inch. On the bright side, you're less likely to get stapled. On the downside, this ride is not very friendly to larger guests. Dollywood's operators will not push down the restraints, so it can be hard for larger guests to get the restraint down far enough because the employees aren't going to give that extra push. This is even more problematic during Smoky Mountain Christmas when people have all their bulky winter coats on. I think the ride is about as accommodating as other RMCs in terms of how the restraint needs to be lowered though. It's just difficult because the employees won't help you as much. One other thing to note with the restraints is that they can tighten during the experience, much more than other RMCs. For that reason, I recommend holding onto the grab bars during the ride to maximize your room for airtime. And trust me, there's going to be a lot of airtime. Once dispatched, you roll out of the station and you turn towards the launch. You'll hear some revving noises, which is a neat effect. And you'll likely see the LSMs being blasted with mist. If the ride works correctly, you'll launch in two phases. The initial burst takes you from the horizontal up to the incline. After a split second delay, you start accelerating at a stronger rate up the hill. While Lightning Rod's launch speed may not look all that impressive, you need to remember that you need to overcome gravity. So this launch pulls some solid positive Gs. It's reminiscent of the force you feel on the Hulk's launch, but it's maintained even longer. It's a really unique sensation you don't get on many launches. Once the launch cuts off, you start to decelerate as you crest that first hill. Rather than going straight into the largest drop, you have this dip in between, so the element has been nicknamed Dolly's Humps. Before the launch was modified, you flew over the first two hills. Now you travel through them at a much more gradual rate. You still get two pops of airtime if you're riding up front, and the little dip does give some floater airtime in the back. But the element is the lone dud if you're in the middle of the train. Thankfully, the rest of Lightning Rod is insane for everyone. The second drop is the main plunge, dropping riders 165 feet or 50 meters down to the ground. This drop delivers some good sustained ejector airtime for those in the back between its size and especially because you have a little bit of speed going into it. Even those up front get some floater airtime here as well. Then you also have that stunning visual of the valley that you're dropping into. This drop is one of the most underrated parts of the ride. Very few people talk about it. The pullout used to have a pothole, but now that it's steel, it is very smooth. And it has decent positive Gs as well. You won't get many positive forces on Lightning Rod, but that doesn't bother me too much given how proficient the ride is in the negative G department. You then rocket around this massive wave turn. The scale of this element dwarfs all other wave turns out there. It offers a few seconds of sustained floater airtime. The visual of being rotated 90 degrees while levitating out of your seat is stunning. And I also love how gracefully you plummet back down to the ground when you're in that back row. Now this pullout is the one lone rough patch on the ride currently. If you're in a wheel seat or the back of the car, you're going to feel a bump here. The rest of the ride is extremely smooth though. You then charge through the twist and shout, which feels like a reverse wave turn. You bank outwards to the left before rapidly twisting and dropping to the right. This element offers sustained floater airtime like the wave turn prior. The airtime is a little weaker, but it's almost as sustained. And you really get whipped out of the element too as you change direction. From this point, Lightning Raw is all about pure speed and ejector airtime. You haul over this off-axis hill, which offers a very strong and sustained burst of ejector airtime. Lightning Rod then climbs uphill. You first fly over half a bunny hill. You have so much speed over this hill that everyone gets a thigh crushing pop of ejector airtime. You then twist to the right and crest over the hillside into coaster nirvana. It is time for the famous quad down. You have four very small and very violent dips as you descend down the hillside. Each one has incredibly strong pops of ejector airtime and you have very little time to recover in between. Between the power and immense speed, this element is insane. It truly is one of the best sequences of any coaster in the world. And it's even better because it sort of feels like a quintuple down because there's this little speed hill afterwards 
delivering an equally as strong and aggressive pop of ejector airtime. You have so much speed over this hill. And you also have a terrifying head chopper with the wooden supports. It's an elite near miss. You then twist upwards into the non-inverting half loop, which is a fancy name for the souped up turnaround. The ascent pulls some decent positive G's, and then you have a super sharp crest. So everyone gets one last burst of ejector airtime as you drop into the brakes. And when you hit the brake run, you have a ton of steam. And if you're like most riders or me, you're going to be breathless and speechless. Lightning Raw is incredible. One of the best aspects about this coaster is its pacing and sequencing. Lightning Raw has zero dead spots. There is not a moment of wasted track. It starts off with a bang with that thrilling uphill launch, and then your body is treated to an assault of airtime. The ride seemingly gets stronger as it goes, which is a rarity in a coaster. So you always have something to look forward to on Lightning Rod. And the way this coaster maintains its speed is ridiculous. Most coasters limp into the brake run. This one seems to get faster as it goes. So what would I rate Lightning Rod? Is there any question? This is my favorite coaster, so it's earning a perfect 10 out of 10. I know this coaster can be a headache to ride, or an ankle injury in my case, but it is worth it. Few coasters have a setting as breathtaking as Lightning Rod's. So when you put a high speed airtime machine on that terrain, you have a truly special experience. Every moment of Lightning Rod is a joy between the speed, forces, and visuals. This coaster has been my favorite ever since I first rode it in 2017 and has maintained that spot ever since. So those are my thoughts on Lightning Rod at Dollywood, which is what I consider to be the world's best coaster. What are your thoughts on this ride? Have you ridden multiple versions of Lightning Rod? Let me know how your experience on this coaster has been. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.